Oh yeah. Go, let's go. Pura vida. Thank you, thank you. It's my birthday. <laughs> God, I love it, I love it, I love it. I'm so glad you can't see me. Yeah. Do this. All right, traders, all right, traders, traders, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for all the happy birthday wishes. I've gotten just literally thousands of messages on the various social networks. Thank you for your messages. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being here on my birthday today. This is my gift to you. My parents taught me something that was quite different from, I think, anything that my, the parents of my friends when I was growing up taught them. And it was tradition for me on my birthday to think about what to give to others. And so... I felt a little strange, believe it or not, uh, growing up, going to various birthday parties of friends in my neighborhood and seeing such a different thing. I thought as a young child that the way my parents taught me about birthdays was the way everyone taught their children about birthdays. But when I went to the birthday parties of my friends and my neighbors, they were it was all about gifts to them. But my parents didn't teach me that way. I mean, it's not like I didn't get gifts or anything like that. I did. I got like one gift or something like that. One small trinket or whatever. But the focus was largely your birthday's coming up. You have to think about what to give. So they taught me reverse. <laughs> so with that being said, I had to think about what to give on my birthday today. And so I decided, why don't I give? what I am most talented in, or one of the things that I'm most talented in, why don't I give my gift to you? Why don't I give my talent to you? Now, what is that talent? Guys, I have been, um, I don't want this to sound egotistical. It's not, it's just factual. But I also want you to know, because I know a lot of people in, in, in this room may not be aware of who I am, but I've been a professional trader for 33 years. Right. I started my professional trading career on Wall Street in um, on December of 1986. It was December, actually December 5th. I was hired. I started December 6th of 1986, and it has been a long, um, a long career uh, as a professional trader. And so I don't trade professionally the way I did on Wall Street, of course not. But I still do trade the markets very actively every single day. But what I, what I found throughout the early part of, of my career is that I had this talent to, I had a talent to actually impart my knowledge and my experience to others. And this is not something that's very common, okay? This is not something that's very common. There are many experts in many fields that are not blessed with the ability to transfer that expertise or the experience they have to others in an understandable way. 
I mean, I'm sure many of you have had the experience of falling asleep um, during lectures in university or college or something like that, just simply because your, your speaker or your instructor was boring as hell. Um, it might have been one of the brightest minds on, in the university or one of the brightest minds in his field if he went to a higher, uh, a higher level university or, or some, some sort. But that, does, that, that was no guarantee that the individual really had the skill to impart life into the teaching. And so I realized when um, Wall Street began to send me their traders to be trained, um, we're talking uh, mid-1990s, uh, when, when um, the records that I broke and the, 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 the small level of fame that I acquired on Wall Street had Wall Street sending their traders to me, I realized that I did have the ability to impart my knowledge and my experience in a very understandable way. And so that is one of my talents on top trading one of my talents is imparting that type of wisdom to you and so that is my gift to you today today i'm going to spend a couple of hours with you talking about some fundamental things about how markets operate and how if you understand the mechanics of how the markets operate you can actually craft and turn this activity into a life changing event all right. This activity called trading changed my life starting at the age of 16, and it radically changed my life when I turned 21 years old. By the time I was 28, I never had to work another day in my life. That is actually documented. In 1997, guys, in 1997, I was, I was awarded with the honor by Barron's. Barron's is an institutional, um, uh, weekly revered, uh, I guess it's a magazine that comes out for the industry, the professional side of the industry. And they awarded me the number one person to go to in the business of trading. I never forget this because in, in that year, my website and websites were relatively still relatively young at the time, but crashed for two weeks. In 1999, I was dubbed by the Dow Jones, Dow Jones itself, a, a venerable entity over 100 years as the messiah of trading. In the year 2000, our industry, the professional industry, selected me to be the spokesman for the entire trading, professional trading industry for two years in a row. And no one else since then has ever been bestowed that honor for two years. One year, yes, never two years. I am the author of five international best-selling books on the market of trading for a living. Now listen to me, my five books that are written in five different languages, <clears throat> excuse me, five different languages. These five books have sold more copies than every other trading book in the history of the world combined. So you can take all the trading books that have ever been written and combine all of their numbers together and they, the, the entire collection of trading books have not sold as many copies as my five books. That is not by mistake, my traders. That is not by mistake. Today, I have a little over 9,000 trading students worldwide, many of them on very different levels. The vast majority of them are beginners. Um, some are extraordinary traders at the top of their game and many are in the middle so what i want to do with you today is i want to take i want to show you my talent of being able to share with you in a very understandable way my deep understanding of how markets operate and i also want to share with you how to take advantage 
of that knowledge, how to utilize that knowledge in a way that could potentially change your life. Now, before we get started with the, with the actual knowledge and material, I want to set some ground rules. It's probably unlikely that I'll be able to answer all of your questions. It's just far too many people in this room. All right, so I can't, maybe, maybe not. I will try to answer um, as many as I can. But I will also try to deliver my knowledge in a way that all that answers the vast majority of any questions that you might have. I encourage that you take notes. I encourage that you take snapshots. I encourage you can record the event, take snapshots, take pictures. I don't care. This is your gift from me. Do whatever you want with it. With it. All right. The other thing, I want you to understand that what, I'm ex what I will explain to you is applicable in all markets. It does not matter what market you trade. Please understand this. If you trade options, bonds, future stocks, Forex, Bitcoin, um, pet rocks, cabbage patch dolls, I don't care what it is you trade. What I'm going to explain to you today is applicable across every single market in the world. It is also applicable across every time frame. So I don't care whether you're a short-term trader in the markets and you're a day trader or you're a long-term investor or anywhere in between. It does not matter. What I'm going to teach you and show you today is applicable across all types of trading and all time frames, all markets, all types of trading, trading and all time frames. I believe that if you have something that is not universal across all markets, that's something that you have is of very little value because the truth in one market does not stop being the truth in another market, largely because human beings are the human beings trade all markets and it's the human beings don't change just because they change a market. So if in essence we're trading human behavior, human behavior is universal across all markets. Now, of course, if Martians from out of space came down and started trading the markets with a different psychological or emotional makeup, maybe things would be different. But human beings trade options, human beings trade stocks, human beings trade futures, human tr beings trade Bitcoin. It's the same psychological and emotional uh, systems that ignite the actions of human beings in all markets and human beings do not stop being fearful and greedy just because they change their market. At the end of the day, we are not trading a market. We are trading people. And some people say, well, Oliver, what do you think about the, you know, the fact that there are now algorithms and, and, and automated trading? Those are not people. No, but they're created by people. So it's the same thing. These automated systems don't create themselves. And so it's the same fear and fear driven and greed driven individuals that are creating the mechanisms that trade the market. So you really get the same thing, no matter whether it's a machine doing it or a human being doing it. Thank you very much for your happy birthday. Wishes. Uh, happy birthday wishes, by the way. Guys, let me get some screen sharing up here. Let's get on with the presentation. Please take notes. Because I'm going to try to rock your world tonight, today, on my birthday. I'm going to try to rock your world. I'm going to rock it. Is that okay if I rock it, guys? Just a few of you let me know. Is it okay if I rock your world? All right. I'm going to rock your world. I'm going to do it in your face, in tu cara, in your face. All right. All right, guys, <clears throat> I went over a little bit of my background. I'm going to skip this. I do, please, guys, I need you following me on YouTube. I need you following me on Instagram. Two most important, I want you following me everywhere, but the two most important, I'd say, right now, is my YouTube channel, Oliver the Less Trader, and Instagram. Guys, I put a lot of time into producing an educational video for you every single day. 
including weekends, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Day by day, you can inch your way to having a better mindset as a trader, having a better psychological setup, setup as a trader, being sure, more confident, more skilled, more able every single day. You can take an additional step in your journey toward trading mastery, okay? So follow me there, guys. All right. Very quickly, um, I will be in a city near some of you really soon. I got New York coming up, Mexico City, Sao Paulo, Buenos Aires, Lima, Costa Rica, Miami, and Spain. So if you happen to have access to any of those cities, guys, I want you to seriously come out and see me. I'm going to shake your hand. I'm going to give you a hug. I'm going to take a picture. I also want to help move you forward in your pursuit for trading mastery. All right, guys. So look, let's get started. All right. Now, um, I want I want the other rooms that are operating off this presentation that you should actually broadcast my presentation in a way because some of the slides are different. All right. I just want to let you guys know that. All right, some of the slides are different from the presentation that you have. All right, guys, there are a few basic things that we need before I can teach you these concepts. I want you to understand that the first thing we need is simply a candlestick chart. Now, there are other forms of charts, but I've found the candlestick version of charting is more powerfully is more powerful from a visual perspective. So obviously on a candlestick chart, guys, the green bars, no matter what time frame of the chart you're looking at, the green bars signify up bars, and the red bars obviously signify down bars. So when you have, let me get my epic pin up here so I can draw for you. Give me a second here. And I'll be able to draw on the charts here for you. Now, Guys, I know a lot of you know this, but give me an opportunity to be a little basic with the information right now because we have people on all different levels here. But we'll get through this fast. Green bars are up bars. Red bars are down bars. Now, it's, 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 it's important to understand that a green bar starts at the bottom and ends upward. So the start is at the bottom of the green. The end of that bar's trading is at the top of the green. The red is just the reverse. A red starts at the top and ends its trading period at the bottom. All right? So it's just reverse. So start trading here, end trading there. The green bar starts trading here and ends trading there. So it's up and down. Very simple. All we need is a simple candlestick chart that shows the green bars that are up and the red bars that are down. Now, the second thing we need are two moving averages. We need a 20 period simple moving average. I don't use any of the sexier versions. I don't use exponential, weighted, triangular, none of that. I use simple. 20 period simple moving average in a 200 period simple moving average. That's it. Nothing else. I use no other indicators. There are traders that use a, 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 a 25 different indi indicators and their charts look like a bowl of spaghetti. I don't believe in that approach. I use two simple indicators, 20 period moving average, 200 period moving average. Moving averages are very simple. They smooth out the chart data. So a 20 period moving average smooths out the chart data over 20 bars. So it, it averages the average closing price over the past 20 bars. The 200 shows you the average price spread out over the last 200 bars. And these are very, very powerful um, visual ways of detecting the internal trend of your item. So one is a short-term trend and the other is the long-term trend. You as a market participant always want, you always want to keep your finger on the pulse of the current trend, the short-term trend of the item that you're trading and the long-term trend. And we use these two moving averages 
to give us that visual view. Now, it's these two moving averages that are also going to serve as the basis for your whole trading approach. And we'll get there. So now, here is a, a chart of the NASDAQ, right? That's the same chart I showed you with nothing. Now we're going to throw the 20 period moving average on that chart. Now I want you to note that the 20 period moving average is rising. I want you to note that the NASDAQ is rising. I want you to note that the NASDAQ is rising predominantly above its 20 period moving average. Now, I want you to look carefully at this 20 period moving average traders. The chart lies to you in a way. Look how thin the 20 period moving average looks. Well, in real life, the 20 period moving average is not as thin as your platform would have you believe. You see, all moving averages are more like zones. Let me show you this. So instead of imagining this skinny blue line, I want you to imagine like this, like a zone. It's not a skinny line. It's a zone. You see? So when you take your moving averages in the, when you view or regard your moving averages more like zones instead of skinny lines, you begin to understand their power from a different perspective. And so now there's no violation of the 20 period moving average by the NASDAQ for years. This is a daily, uh, I think this is a monthly chart, by the way. For years, the NASDAQ has failed to be able to severely break its 20 period moving average. So because of the zone like nature of the moving averages, you can't look like, you can't look at this as a break. You can't look at these little brief brief things. These are not breaks. The zone of the 20 is not broken. All right. So always look at moving averages more like zones or channels, if you will. And they will serve you better. Now, I want to I want to give you a piece of a valuable piece of information. here. Last year I did a study on on all the losses of my trading organization. So I took every single trading loss over a six month period and I separated those losses into several categories. 83% of all the trading losses came from one thing. Failure to trade in the direction of the 20 period moving average. Listen to me carefully traders. This is one of the fundamental cornerstones of proper market play. The vast majority of time, you need to trade in the direction of the 20 period moving average. If the 20 period moving average is freaking rising like this, you look to go long. No shorting. No going the opposite way. No betting on the downside. If the 20 period moving average is rising, you are not afraid of the color red. You are not scared of a downward move. It's temporary. Your assumption must be that red is temporary and green will resume. You bank on the color green. You bet on the color green. You ignore the color red as long as your 20 period moving average is rising. You go with the flow, with the power, and the flow and the power you can read via the 20 period moving average. Now tell me you understand this. Tell me you understand that one of the cornerstones of proper play is to play with the 20 period moving average and not against it. 83% of my traders losses could have been eliminated with this one simple correction. They were trying to be cute, trying to be smarter than the market by trying to pick the top, by trying to to, to to think they know when it's over instead of just going with the freaking flow. Do you understand? You go with the flow. Guys, I will tell you, if you dive into a river with a powerful current to the upside, like this, a powerful current that way, if you dive into that river, that river is going to sweep you away in that direction. 
But what if you trip into that current by mistake? What if you slip on a rock and you fall into the river? The current's still going to sweep you into the same direction. It doesn't matter. If you play with the 20, you can be a little sloppy. You can be a little a, a little inaccurate. You can have some mistakes and still, despite your mistakes, despite being sloppy, the current takes you in the desired direction the vast majority of the time with your sloppiness. So this is one of the key things, play with the 20. Now, I want you to note something else. When you have a rising 20 and you get the color red, you should get happy because the color red is what is going to ignite your next opportunity. Your next opportunity after red is to buy the green that wipes out the red. So look at this. Here is red right there. And here, I should do this with a little. Here is green. Here's the green bar that's wiping out the red. Boom. You understand? Here's a red bar. When does green wipe out the red bar? Right here. Boom. Here's a red bar. When does green wipe out the red bar? Right here. Boom. So now you just play the freaking color game. Boys and girls, welcome to the color game. Red bars and green bars. What do you got to talk to me? What's going on? Up bars and down bars, boys and girls. And the blue line, boys and girls, the 20 period moving average. Is it rising or is it falling? If it's rising, we buy green above red, boys and girls. This is a simple game. But you know what? You make it complicated. This is a simple game, but you make it complex. This is a simple but powerful game. You make it difficult. You bring complexity to the game. You bring your baggage to the game. You bring your lack of discipline to the game. You bring your, your so-called smarts and your guesses and your all of these things that make the game more complex than it is. The game is made up of up bars and down bars. That's it. Two moving averages. That's it. Two colors, red and green. That's it. Rising or declining moving average. That's it. Now, I'm just getting started. But by the time we finish here today, you will never see markets the same. And hopefully you will never play them again the same way. I'm out to make my birthday the day that changes the way you see markets and the way you play them, starting from today, my birthday. Let's go. All right. Oh, I, uh, Juliana, they need me to stop this. The, uh, there's an issue right now with the Spanish room. So let me pause for a bit. But I want to make sure that we understand. Thank you very much for your happy birthday wishes, guys. Thank you very much. Let me know when I can start again, guys. Let me know when I can start again. Give me a second here. Hello? Hey. I'm, I, told, I, I explained this. I explained this yesterday.
I'm guys. I'm here. I'll be right back with you. Don't, don't go anywhere. Stay. All right, guys, we're getting we're getting the solution to this. So we're getting this get, going to get started in like another two minutes or so. All right. Cool. So, yes, guys, we are recording this. So should you not be able to last you the end, it is going to be recorded and made available at some point in the future. So I don't want you worried about that. Again, as I mentioned to you guys, you can take notes, you can take snapshots, you can record it yourself if you want to. This is my gift to you. This is my gift to you. And it doesn't matter to me. I've got time. If we've got to go a little bit past two hours or whatever the intended time, I'm going to do it. I do want to make sure I get done. And I want you to walk away with this, uh, with this knowledge. All right. Uh, what moving average is the most powerful? The 20, the 2, 5, 15, 60 daily charts. It doesn't, Edward, it, it doesn't matter what the time frame is. The time frame, you pick a time frame based on the duration of the trades you're looking for. So if you're looking to be in a trade eight to 10 minutes, you're going to trade a two minute chart. If you're looking to be in trades an hour or, or, or longer, you're going to trade a five minute chart. If you're looking to stay in trades all day, you're going to trade like a 15 minute chart. If you're looking to trade stocks over several days, you're going to choose a 60 minute chart or a daily chart. If you're looking to play stocks on a, on, on a week, a, a, a multi week basis or a multi month basis, you're going to use a weekly time frame. The time frame is only important in terms of what duration of trades do you want to trade on average? You understand? So that's how you choose a time frame. And then whatever time frame you choose, you apply a 20 or 200. That's it, if the 20 and the 200. So the 20 and 200 is powerful on any time frame. It doesn't matter. This is what I explained at the beginning of the presentation, that what I'm going to what I'm going to teach you is applicable across every single market in the world, every single time frame in the world. It doesn't matter. It's universal. I won't teach you something that is not universal. I think that's stupid. All right. Do I also use do I also use a lot logarithmic lo I don't really. I don't I don't find I don't find that form um very useful for me. All right, so I don't use the logarithmic chart. One minute. I'm not a huge fan of using the one minute time frame exclusively. I, I have to admit that at times it can, it can be, come in handy, but as an exclusive trading time frame, I don't like it because the one minute is dangerously close to use 
to a lot of random noise. So as you continue to get closer and closer to a chick tick chart, you introduce more chaos, random chaos into, into what you see. So the two minutes starts to smooth some of that chaos, some of that the random nature of, of, of chaos. It starts to smooth it out. The five minute really smooths it out, quite honestly. The two minutes still has a little bit of it. The one minute has a lot of it. Now, if you think that there's not that much difference between a one minute and a two minute chart, you're really thinking wrong. It's a 100% jump. Right. That's huge. It's a huge difference. It may not appear like it's a huge difference, but it is. All right. All right. Let me know. Are we are we set? Can we go? Eddie's saying, but their locations are different. You mean the locations of the 20? It's, it doesn't matter. It, what matters is you choosing the right time frame that fits your style of trading. So like I said, if you're going to trade over an 8 to 10, 8 to 12 period, I want to be in the markets. I want to be exposed to the possibility of danger only 8 to 12 minutes. Your time frame is a two-minute time frame. And now the location of your 20 and 200 become relevant for that time frame. It doesn't matter the other time frames. What's relevant for your time frame? All right. Some people think that there's just some one set location that I've got to find what specific location is the most meaningful. So which time frame should I choose? That's not how you choose a time frame. All right. Guys, listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. There are no time frames. Listen to me carefully. I'm going to repeat this. Time frames do not exist, traders. Time frames don't exist. The market is one fluid, giant river. It doesn't have time frames. The river doesn't have slices. It doesn't have two minute slices in the river. The river doesn't have five minute slices or 15 minute or even daily slices, really. We create the slices. We create time frames. It's a trick that we use our platforms to play on the market. We slice the market's data up for our own analysis purposes. But the market doesn't have slices. The market doesn't stop at every two minutes and start the next two minute bar. Do you follow what I'm saying, guys? That's our creation. So don't think that there's some magical time frame that's more important than the other. It's your creation. Time frames don't exist. All right. Five minute is fine. Actually, five minutes is even better than two minutes. Please, can, can I get going, guys? Talk to me. Talk to me. Are we ready? What's the problem? No, I'm not talking to you guys. I'm talking to my team. <laughs> I'm talking to my team. They're trying to get uh, the slides up and running on, in the other room. Are we not ready? All right. Right. The price of something can change when the market is closed, which tends to cause gaps. That's right, Tony. So gaps in the market are formed because the market is artificially held back from responding to 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 whatever it responds to while, you know, we close the market. But if the market wasn't closed and was allowed to trade freely, the gaps would be greatly minimized, right? Because instead of gapping, the stock would just trade there. What do I think about gaps? I love them. I actually specialize in gaps. Beautiful things.
Well, yeah, the, the for I have not seen gap, too many gaps in forex. No, you won't. I mean, every now and then you will, but it's not very common because you're, you're dealing with a 24 hour traded market for the most part. So it's allowed to trade there. But in the equity markets, gaps are a very prevalent phenomenon because the markets aren't allowed to respond. So if something changes the mindset of market participants, but the markets close, they can't act on that change until the market opens. Boom, gap, right? What platform do I use to trade? We use a platform called Fusion. It is an institutional platform. Um, it's not like a platform that any retail trader can go get, gain access to. You have to be part of a professional institutional trading firm um, that obviously uh, is a client of, of, of Fusion. So we use Fusion. Oliver, if the stock is between the 20 and the 200, does that mean no trade? Well, I want to get to that. I'm just waiting for the other room to have their issue resolved here. All right. But thank you very much, guys. I continue to say thank you for your, your birthday wishes. Thank you. All right. What do I think about <clears throat> trading outside American hours? Um, I don't know what that means. You mean the American market or are you talking about another market outside of American hours? It was hard to get into the, pres the presentation, Gallo. Yeah, just so many people here, guys. Thanks, Jason. Thank you for your thank you for your birthday wishes. Yeah. See, so guys, we've got like two thousand people in in one room, and 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 and, and there's almost five thousand five hundred in this room here. Yeah, I'll show you here. So this this four hundred and thirty seven people here. I don't know if you can see that. And um, but I think there's like I don't know I think there's like two thousand people in the other room if not more. So that's why I can't can't move on until they get their issue resolved. Right. Um, do I use the same moving averages for long term investments? All right, I'll repeat this again. And there's one more time. Everything I teach you is applicable across every single market in the world on planet Earth. I don't know about any other planets, but on this planet, it's applicable to any market for trades. Everything I teach you is applicable across all time frames, short term time frames, long term time frames. It's universal. So all you have to do is put it on any market you trade or any time frame you trade, anything that I'm teaching you, and it's applicable. So the answer is yes, absolutely. Now, guys, I will tell you that if you are having during this presentation a sound issue, it's usually on your end. Sound is usually never my end, believe it or not. So you'll you'll have to tinker on your end, whether it's log. I, I wouldn't log back out, but. It is definitely most of the time on your end if you're getting sound issues. Okay, just want to let you know. All right. What's my money risk ratio? It's an interesting question. Um, guys, I'm, I'm doing this while, while we are waiting for the other room to get their issue resolved. We'll, 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 be, we'll be restarting. So I'm on pause mode right now. But let me just take this, guys. Um, a, many of you have probably heard of the three to one risk reward ratio and things of that nature, two to one, three to one, four to one. These are ratios for novice participants. Um, as you become more professional, you actually move in the opposite direction. And as your consistency grows, you actually move into having an inverse an inverse risk re re reward ratio. So for instance, a three to one means that you want to win $3 for every $1 that you lose. So you want your wins, right? 
to be three times on average bigger than your losses, right? Now this sounds, this sounds intelligent, does it not? That yes, if I win $3, if I, every time I win, I win $3, but every time I lose, I lose $1. Yeah, that would make me a profitable trader. Well, it's helpful in the beginning. It's helpful, but it is not ideal because, listen to me carefully, because the number of opportunities that you will get that fit a three to one reward ratio is very small. Now, in the beginning, when you're a novice, you that's a good thing. You don't want to overtrade. You 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 should take measured plays and they should come gradually to you because you're a baby. All right. But if you are a consistent, accurate trader, you need to you're you want to have your consistency and accuracy pay off for you. So the more trades you take, the more opportunities that you can be exposed to, the more money your consistency will allow you to make. If you're waiting around for a three to one scenario, you are wasting your talent of being consistent. So if I were to go down to, listen to me carefully, guys, it's important. If I were to go down to a two to one, will I get more opportunities come my way? Just a few of you let me know. Will I get more opportunities come my way with a two to one than I will with a three to one? Right? Of course, many more two to ones than three to ones. Well, what about a one to one? One for every one dollar I win, I also lose one dollar. There's many more opportunities at a one to one. Now, some people say, well, Oliver, why would I want a one to one ratio? If you're consistent, you want a one to one more than you want a three to one. Why? Because if you win eight times out of every 10 trades and you lose only one time out of every 10, I mean, two times out of every 10, you're an enormously profitable trader. All right. But what if I take an inverse relationship and go 0.50 to 1? So now, all right, well, no. So now, for every 50 cent gain, I, every time I lose, I lose $1, but every time I win, I win 50 cents. Well, I will get tremendously more opportunities. So while this trader is waiting for a $3 win, I'm 50 centing him to death. 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent. Okay, got my $3. And this guy's still waiting for his first $3. 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent, another $3. 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent. I got another $3 and another $3 and another $3 and another $3. This guy's still waiting for a three to one, $3 to come his way. I can get the $3 all day long while this trader's waiting for the occasional $3 move to occur. And I can accumulate that $3 25 to 50 cents at a time. Do you understand what I'm saying? I can 25 cent that trader to death. And that's where the inverse relationship comes in, but only if you're consistent. When you're not consistent, you need this to protect you. These are, this is for babies. All right. Guys, talk to me. What's going on? No, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to my team. My team, my team, talk to me. What's going on?
guys give me just a All right, guys, update. Here's the update, guys. We're crashing this system. There are literally thousands of people still trying to get in. Some of you had a hard time getting in because of that issue. And every minute, there's more people trying to get in, so the system is crashing. There's over 2,000 people in the room, but the system's not allowing the room to operate because every second, there's there's about 2,000 more people trying to gain access to the system. It's crazy. They're trying to create a solution right now um, by broadcasting on YouTube instead of using the system. So we're going to have to hang out a bit. Hopefully we can get a, a resolution really fast here. Thank you once again. <laughs> I know I broke the webinar thing. It's crazy. Yeah, no one does events with these sizes, guys. It's just, uh, they're just not used to them uh, or accustomed to them. So I guess their, their systems can't really handle this. All right. Um, <laughs> Stacy, yeah. So what else? Um, I don't know. Do you guys think Skype would be able to handle it? Um, yeah, that's how they're trying to resolve it with a YouTube live stream. Um, they're, they're, they're setting that up now. Yeah, YouTube can handle it. I, I calculated my average losing trades last night. What do I do with that data now? All right. So Doris saying, Oliver, I, 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 t I now know my average loss per trade. Over how many trades, Dora? Over 500. Whoa, okay. And, and what is that average loss? Your average loss is $28. Okay. Um, I actually, what size account are you trading? All right. I think that loss is too small. Believe it or not, guys, you can have loss is too small and it can actually be a problem that sounds too small to me Dora. i think that average loss should be a little higher which means that you're going to open up your trades and allow them to breathe a little bit more giving them a little bit more opportunity to actually eventually work out in your favor but sometimes you can put your trades in such a tight straight jacket they can't perform for you like just any little movement knocks you off the trade because you're trying to keep the stops so tight to keep your losses so little and so any little wiggle any significant move knocks you out all right and if you're experiencing where many times you get knocked out and then your stock goes and you kick yourself oh shoot i had that 
If you're finding that occurring frequently, that's a key sign your stops are too tight. You're trying to keep your stocks too tight in a straight jacket. Does that make sense? Do I trade the E-minis open with the same method? My method is universal across every market and every time frame. I think that's the fifth time I said it. I'll keep saying it. So the answer is yes. Do I prefer the two bar stop out on an RBI play or hard stop under the bar ignored? It depends. I prefer the two bar stop out if it's a regular trade. There are certain trades that are not regular, which mean that there are certain do or die trades. And I don't want a filter. If it fails, I'm out. But if it's not one of those do or die trades, I prefer the two bar stop rule. I think most trades need that extra filter. And my statistics have proven that that filter, that two bar stop rule instead of a single bar stop rule will save 12% of your losing trades. So you regain 12% of your, of, your, of your losses with the two bar stop rule. Any plans to visit India? Um, it's on my bucket list. Put it to you that way. Yeah. When do we give importance to a whole number and at what locations? I think sometimes too much importance is given to whole numbers. I'm not saying that they're not significant in any way. They have significance, but if you're too focused on hold numbers, you will limit your gains in some of your winning plays. So because some traders place so much importance on whole numbers that if they're in a winning play that's approaching a whole number, they take the money off the table at or around the whole number just because of the idea of the whole number. And that's a wrong approach. All right. Um, but with that being said, you've got You've got several levels that have varying degrees of importance, all right, in a dollar. So let me just demonstrate that right now. So let's say, for instance, you got $20. There's 20.25 20 to 30 range, right? Yeah, 33 range. Like that range, that point 25 to 33 cents or so, that's a minor area. 20.50 ish. Right? So you got the point 50, the point 25 to 30, and the, the round number. And repeat. These, this is minor. This is this is minor, this is more minor, and this is more major, the, the whole round number. Now, again, it's an area, you know, one or two cents above or below these areas are not that important. It's more of like a range. The same way I tell you that your 20 period moving average is more like a zone, well, these are more like zones too, all right? A few cent zones or what have you. And so a stock will tend to have some very interesting um, reactionary points off that. Now, there are some really major round numbers. Like you look at the current chart of the NASDAQ now, look at the round, look at the round number 10,000 that we're approaching. Now, that's likely to be quite significant in that area. All right. All right. Wow. Um, do I look at volume, percentage change, and news to invest in 
penny stocks or any other stocks. Um, I'll just say this. My traders and I do not focus on garbage. All right. So a stock trades in the pennies or sub pennies because it's garbage, right? We trade quality things that have institutional sponsorship. We don't turn this game into a casino where we're trying to just bet for some giant, big, giant score that comes up, comes your way once every eight years. No, that's just not our game. I don't play that game. And no, I don't use news as a way to make money in the markets. Um, news is created for the general public. News is, is measured and timed um, in many cases to put the general public on the wrong side of the market. It's the worst way to try to make money in the markets, which is to follow news and play with the news. All right. All the news at the bottom of a market is bad when that's when the news should really be good. And all the see if a, if a market cycle is this, look at this, guys. Let's say your market cycle is this. All right down here. Then all the news is bad. All the news is bad because the market has dropped. The message is stay away. But all the news here is great. Your employment numbers are up. Or, you know, the economy is humming. Earnings are great. But you're here. So all the news is great here and all the news is bad there. Isn't that freaking backwards? All right. The other thing, if a buy in your trading plan is a buy, news should have no relevance on what you should be doing. Your buys and your sells should be independent of what the news say, the news is saying. Now sometimes the news might match what your buy is saying and sometimes it doesn't, but your buy must override anything else. All right. YouTube live has started. Tony W. W. Yes, you buy. So, guys, don't forget our, our number one rule that we, we've been discussing here. What's a way of, a, based on the statistics of my own traders, I want to see if you've been listening. What's, the, what's a way of eliminating, what's a way that they could have eliminated 83% of their losing trades? Trade with what? trade with what the 20 period moving average that's right now in trading with the 20 period moving average what do you do how do you know when to strike when what happens when green eliminates a red right and green takes out red perfect good 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 you're listening now, the other thing I will add to this is that that event of green taking out red should occur somewhere near the 20, not, away, not far away from it. So, so not here. If green eliminates red here, that's too far. Not here. If green eliminates red, that's too far. You see? But here, boom. Here is fine. Boom. All right. Here is fine. Here is fine. You're not that far from the 20. Nothing overinflated away from the 20. You see? So if you get these two things right, you can pull up any freaking chart in the world and know generally you should be able to tell me, all right, I'm a I'm a buyer or I'm a shorter. My entry points are here, here, and there. Boom. Any chart in the world, any market in the world, any time frame in the world, you should be able to tell me that. 
And that's like 10 minutes into my talk here today. If we're ever able, if we're ever able going to be able to continue this. If we can't continue, I will reschedule this. I do want you to have it. Uh, should the elimination be with just one bar or multiple bars? One bar is fine, but the stronger that elimination, the better, right? So Guys, um, yeah, I mean, we're fine here. It's, we're fine here in the English room. But we're moving the Spanish room to, to YouTube, all right? But I, I, we're going to stay here. We're fine. All right, Oliver, there are some times that the 20 MA is starting to drop, and you don't know whether it's a pullback or reversal of the main, main trend. That's a very good point, and that is in my talk today. I want to just be able to get to it, all right? So tomorrow, guys, just so you know, I will be uh, spending about four hours tomorrow with my, with my wealth team. And so my wealth trading team, we focus on playing the markets for really, really big moves and big gains. So what you're looking at here on this NASDAQ chart is I started the wealth program back in 2010, right? And we've been playing this whole move to the upside for huge gains since 2010. So now with the market approaching really extreme overbought scenarios, right? We're looking now to position ourselves for the next cycle to the downside for big money. I mean, we really truly milk these last 10 years in a, in a huge way. And with the same concepts, many of the same concepts I've, I, I, I've taught you um, were applied just on longer time frames, right? And you see it here. I just playing with the 20, making sure your 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 you know playing not too far away from that rising 20. And you're playing quality things. You see, in order for this to work, you need institutional sponsorship. Now, if you don't know what that means, that means is that you need institutions that to dominate your stock. Penny stocks are not dominated by institutions. Those are dominated by idiots and, and stock manipulators, right? But you need legitimate institutional sponsorship that dominates the stock because they are the ones that make you money. How are you going to, if you buy a stock and the institutions don't buy it after you bought it, how is it going to go up? You're going to tell your neighbors to buy it and push it up? You're going to tell your mom and dad to buy it to push it up? They don't have enough money to push Microsoft up, right? You need institution. You need billions of dollars coming in after you. So we play things with solid institutional sponsorship. They're the ones that make us money. All right, so once the green bar crosses the high of the red bar, should we enter immediately? Yes. You don't wait for this green bar to finish. You do it immediately because 
think about this. What if the green bar finishes here? All right. In addition to that, if your protection is under that green bar, do you want your this to be your potential loss or this to be your potential loss, right? Make sense? So enter your loss is smaller than if you were to enter here. All right, so entering right away keeps your loss smaller when it doesn't work and it prevents you from missing money if the bar the, if your entry bar continues to run is institutional sponsorship indicated by volume well guys look if you just stick to the the main stocks in your NASDAQ 100, your S&P 100, you can go a little bit beyond like the S&P 500 or whatever, but if you stay there, that's where that's where 90% of all of your institutions are. All right. We want grade A things. You know, we want grade A stocks that institutions push around because they're in there with billions of dollars. It's the only way you're going to have a market move like this. All right. And, and institutions, institutional sponsorship creates more order. So when you're dealing with a market that doesn't have institutional sponsorship, it's orderless most of the time. It's, it's random. It's chaotic. It's wild. It's hard to make sense of it. It's a casino. And that's the appeal of playing penny stock. There are two things that appeal to penny stock players. Number one, it's a poor man's racetrack. It takes a, because you don't, you supposedly don't need a lot of money. So it attracts poor people to the game, right? And poor people always lose. So it attracts poor people with no money to the game. That is not a market you want to be in that's filled with poor people with no money. Now, who are they going to move the stock for you? Right? No. In addition to that, it's, um, it's a casino. So every now and then you get a big win. But shoot, every now and then lightning strikes. So what? I can't make a living off of every now and then. I need to make a living off of most of the time. This happens most of the time. I need something that happens 82% of the time, 81% of the time, 78% of the time. And I need that shit happening every day, every day, every hour, every hour. If I could teach you, if I could show you that these three things happen every single hour of the day, and all you have to do is wait for them and put this money in it when this happens. You protect yourself this way. If I could show you that. I can show you how to change your whole life. And that's really how proper markets sh should be played. You need to find highly reliable, repetitive events that happen over and over and over again, almost the same way. But not just once every four years, not just once a month not just even once a day, several times an hour. Now, what's my definition of mastery? There are several. If you can, if a trader of mine gets to the point where they're profitable virtually, every eight minutes they find an opportunity. Every eight minutes they get richer. That's mastery. That's my definition of mastery. Eight minutes at a time. So when you really get good at this, if you're from a short term perspective, you should be able to find money in the markets every eight minutes of your life. That's mastery. Now, if you're playing longer term, that's different. But I'm talking about the shorter term time frames now. And think about that. Think about getting a paycheck every eight minutes. That's crazy, but that's the level of mastery you can rise to.
All right, guys, talk to me. I'm not, not you guys. I'm talking to my team. You ready? All right. Let's go. I love it. All right, we're back. All right, guys, so as I was explaining, you must understand that 82 percent of all losses would have been eliminated if one just traded with the 20 period moving average in the flow of the 20 period moving average now a few things when you have a rising 20 period moving average you want to be have a bias to the long side right you want to have a bias to the long side so you're going to ignore not ignore but you're going to place less importance on red bars and more importance on green bars so your green bars become 10 times more important than your red bars. In fact, when you have a rising 20 period moving average, your red bars are nothing more than potential opportunities to get ready to get in. And so, so red bars get us ready to strike on the long side, on the buy side. Now, I want you to note on this chart how the, the NASDAQ moves near the 20 and then away. Moves near the 20 and then away. Moves back near the 20 and then away. All right? So there's this cycle that repeats itself over and over again during the trend. Near the 20, away from the 20. Near the 20, away from the 20. Now, another thing I want you to re remember that I, that I told you, the 20 is not a skinny line. The 20 is a zone. Don't look at it like it's a skinny line. So look at it more like it's a channel, if you will. A channel is probably a better term for it. The 20 period moving average channel. So these seeming violations of the 20 are not true violations. It's just bouncing off of the 20 period moving average zone. So if you would imagine the 20 period moving average to be more like a fence that you can lean on, you lean on the fence and the fence bounces or ricochets the stock back. We're leaning on the fence, leaning on the fence. The fence has leeway, leaning on the fence, leaning on the fence, but not breaking the fence. You see? So that's important to understand about move, the, the concept of moving averages. Now, in addition to that, you want to make sure that you enter in the direction of the 20, but enter on strong green bars or on green bars that eliminate the high of red bars. So here's a red bar. This green eliminates the high of a red bar right there. Boom. Now, you don't wait for that green bar to finish trading. You enter as soon as it crosses the high. The instant, the nanosecond, no waiting, all right? No waiting. And you put your protection under the red. So if you're buying above red, you put your protection under the red. You got it? So here, we're buying above red. Here's the red. You're buying above red. Boom. You put your protection under the red. It's Your protection always goes under red the bar that's being cleared, okay? So the red bar is being cleared. You use the bar that's being cleared as the reference point for your protection. Now, I have to bring you to another point, very important. You only want to take green bar, red bar eliminations, I should say, that are close or that are near the 20 period moving average zone. You do not want to take a red bar being eliminated here. It's too far from the 20. You don't want to take one here. That's too far from the 20. But here is fine. Here is not that far away. That's fine. Here, You see, here is fine. Not far away. So your best entry are, are near the 20, not away from the 20. So get this, if your best entry points are near the 20, what do you think you should do when you are get 
far away from the 20. What do you think you should do? Think about exiting. That's right. That's right. That's right. So let's let's carry forward. Now let's put the 200 period moving average on this chart, shall we? Remember, you need both of these on the chart at all times. Now I want you to take a look at the left-hand side of the chart. Look at the le left-hand side of the same NASDAQ chart. Notice how the 20 and the 200 are relatively close here. But notice on this part, they have spread out further and wider apart. This is an indication of where you are in the cycle. So look, markets move from narrow states to wide states. You see? Then back to narrow. You see? Then from narrow to wide again. You see? Then from wide back to narrow. If you, you must know where you are in your item cycle. Are you in a narrow state where an explosion up or down is likely? Or are you already in a wide separated state where a reversal is imminent? And if you don't know where your item is in its own cycle, how can you come up with the proper trading plan for that item? Do you know how many millions of people are out there playing something based on guesses, based on feelings, and not based on cycles? How idiotic. You must know where you are in this cycle. Am I close? Are we close together? Or are we far apart? This gives you the basis for how to play your item. You understand? Now, the wider you get far apart, the wider the 20 separates from the 200, the closer you become to the end of that cycle, the top of that cycle, or the bottom. It can happen both ways. Remember, guys, look at this. You remember that from a narrow state, you can explode upward or downward. It doesn't matter, actually. But whichever way it starts exploding, you must start playing that way. You don't have to know in advance, out of the narrow state, do we break down or do we break up? You don't have to know that in advance. You just have to wait for it to happen. And when it happens, you just know it in real time. All right, we're breaking out to the upside. So the movement out of the narrow state is to the upside. But it's possible that the movement out of the narrow state moves to the downside. And we will play them both. But you've got to know at all times what state is this stock in, in any time frame. So if you're playing the two minute, what's the two minutes? Where are you in the two minute cycle? If you play five minute, where are you in the five minute cycle? If you play daily chart, where are you on the daily cycle? If you play monthly chart, where are you in the monthly cycle? It doesn't matter what time frame you choose to trade. The same principle applies. You must know where you are in the cycle in that in that specific time. Now, let's let's talk about this breathing mechanism a little bit more in detail. Here. The narrow state, when your 20 and your 200 are relatively close, they don't have to be touching. But when they're relatively close, trust me, your best opportunities are going to come from this narrow state. Your stock is going to eventually explode out of that narrow state, up or down, and, and you will experience flow. You're going to experience extended moves out of this narrow state, that there's going to be a, a greater order, a greater longevity to the moves. This is not the time to play for really, really tiny little games in and out. You want to really focus on trying to hold and maximize as much of the explosion out of the narrow state as possible. But when you start to get the wide separation, your game is starting to get close to the end and you have to be very careful now playing the same buy game. In, in, in fact, I'm going to teach you today that once you get wide 
a wide exhale state. That's what I call it, a wide exhale. The narrow state is inhale, like the market's breathing, and the wide state is exhale. When you get that exhale and that wide separation between the 20 and the 200, you need to look for a possible, you need to look for the possibility of playing the market now against the moving average. Now, I told you when we first started that I had traders that I studied all of their losing trades and 83% of their losing trades was, was determined by one fault. And that fault was playing against the 20 period moving average. So the 20 period moving average rising, they're trying to short, the 20 period moving average is declining, they're trying to go long. Yes, so that leads one to believe that if you play with the 20 period moving average the vast majority of the time, you're gonna improve your consistency. And that is absolutely true. It's one of the key cornerstones of proper market play. However, there are moments where going against the 20 period moving average is actually more ideal. It is more ideal once you have achieved an exhale state. What's an exhale state? Wide separation after an extended move from a narrow state. That's important. The extended move out of the narrow state moving to the exhale wide state, now you think the other way. Tell me you understand this. Exhale state, the other way. Exhale state, the other way. Now, okay. From the exhale state, you are likely to move in some form or fashion back to the narrow state again. And ladies and gentlemen, this is what markets do. They exhale and inhale. They exhale, they inhale. And the other way, they exhale, they inhale. They exhale, they inhale. There are different shapes of the, ex the, the exhale, of course. They exhale, they inhale, and different sizes, you see? And that's what throws some traders off, that all the exhales aren't the same size and the same duration, but that's all the market can do is exhale up or exhale down and come back. Exhale up or exhale down from the narrow state and then eventually come back. And let me tell you something. Mark my words. Every market must come back. Every single one. Now, whenever I tell traders, some traders this, they, they look at me with this skeptical eye. What do you mean, Oliver? All, all markets come back to zero. All of them. All of them. But Oliver, how can that be? The market's been going up for decades. No, it hasn't. The market has not been going up for decades. But Oliver, you said that you, you, you started your wealth traders in 2010 and you have played the market for 10 years to the upside, yes? But that still does not mean that we don't come all the way back down to zero. Let me just tell you a trick that the market plays on the people, right? To give you the illusion that stocks go up over time. The Dow Jones 30, the Dow Jones um, industrial average is made up of 30 stocks, all right? And if you look at a historical chart of the Dow Jones, you will see the chart look like this. Right. From 1929, with some interruptions, it looks like this, straight up. Right. But that is false. Do you know why? Do you know why the Dow Jones Industrial Average does not rise? Because today, there's only one stock left of the original Dow Jones 30 stocks in that index. So what does that mean? That every time one goes bad, they erase it and replace it with something good. 
Now, what if you could do that with your own trading record? Oh, what if I could take my losing trades, remove them out of the numbers and put winning trades in there? <laughs> Wouldn't your chart go straight up too? Wouldn't your P&L look straight up? If you could take out the bad ones, if the Dow never took out the bad ones, it wouldn't look like this. You know how many stocks have gone to zero? But see, what the averages do is they eliminate the ones that are bad and replace them with something good to give the illusion that the markets go up over freaking time. Every freaking cycle goes up and comes back down to zero. Every single one. And I want you to understand that you must not buy into this nonsense so that you can start playing the game the professional way from the idea that what goes up is going to come down. And I want you to know when it's likely to come down, when you've got that wide exhale state, we're looking for ground zero again. All right. Now, we're not you're, you as long as you follow me and as long as you're mine. I'm going to make sure you approach this the right way. I'm going to make sure you see with clear eyes. I'm not going to allow you to be duped by these, these, these sayings or, or these generally accepted beliefs that are really truly false. They're really false. Now, let's take a look at this past example. Look at the NASDAQ back in 1995. Look at the inhale state. Look at how close the 20 and the 200 are together. You see it? You see how close they are together in 1995? Just let me know. If you let me know. You got it? You see it? Yes? Okay. Now, look at, boom! Look at the exhale state. Wow. Look at the wide separation between the 20 and the 200. Look at the wide separation between the stock, the item, the NASDAQ, and the 20, and the 20, and the 200. Wow. Now, guys, someone bought here. Someone who did not know Oliver Velez bought there. Someone's hanging from this little... flagpole there. <laughs> Boom. Someone who didn't know me, of course. Now we go from exhale <laughs> all the way back to inhale. And we repeat, every market comes all the way back. Every single one. It is a universal law. Don't get tricked by the games. Don't buy into this nonsense. Oh, but it's different this time. The news, the earnings, the different world, the internet, the, this. Bull. Watch. All right. Now, I've got to delve into some of the really minute but very important things here. The two igniting bar types. Now, we've got to add this to our equation. We've got the chart. We've got the 20. We've got the 200. We've got the two states. So look at what we have. We've got the, we've got the chart. We've got, let's go over it again very quickly. We've got the chart with the green bars and the red bars. Time frame doesn't matter. You pick the time frame. We've got the two moving averages, the 20 and the 200. The 20, the 200. We've got the two states, right? Narrow, inhale, and wide, exhale. Now we need the two bars. So everything is twos. Two colors, 
red and green bars. Two moving averages, 20 and 200. Two states, narrow inhale, wide exhale. Two bars, elephants and tails. I am telling you, traders, that these are the two main bars that you need. You need to have these in your toolbox. You need these two, two bars in your pocket. You need this as the main part of your trading arsenal. We can make a living off of two bar types, elephants and tails. Now look at them. You've got a green bull elephant going up and a red elephant crashing down, right? Two solid fat bars, okay? On the tail side, you have bottoming tail bars where the tails are at the bottom of a body. Your body can be green, your body can be red, or you can have a no color body. The body is not the important thing. It's the tail that's important. Is the tail at the bottom of the body or are the tails at the top of the body? But trust me when I tell you the color type is not as important as the tail itself. Now, on the left-hand side, you've got the bullish versions of the bars. Elephants will tend to lead to more green to the upside. I should do that in a different color. Green elephants will lead to tend to lead to higher prices. Red elephants will tend to lead to lower prices. Bottoming tail bars will tend to lead to higher prices. And topping tail bars will tend to lead to lower prices. But we need to make sure that these bars that we wait for, we wait for these bars, must happen in the right location. Location is key. Location in your cycle is key. Location in your cycle is key. Now, which bars do you think you want to see in a narrow state? You want to see. Here's your narrow state. What do you want to see here? That's right. You want to see these bars. Boom! Traders, listen to me. I don't care which one it is. Green elephant. Boom! Bottoming tail bar with the green top. Boom! Bottoming tail bar with the red top. Boom! Bottoming tail with no color top, boom. I don't care which one it is. And in many cases, you get a variety of them in this narrow state area. This is your, these are your kickoff bars. These are your igniting bars. You've got four and you simply wait. You don't choose your favorite. But Oliver, I, I like the cute little tail bar with the little red top. I like the color red. It's my favorite color. I'll, no, you don't pick a favorite. You play whichever freaking one comes next. You understand? Then at the top, this is how, listen to me carefully, this is how you play the reversal back to narrow. This is the ultimate level of mastery when you can play it going up and milk that baby going down too. Why not? Why leave that on the table? I want the up move and I want the down move. And if you watch me trading, you're, you watch me shorting from elevated positions all the time. I'm shorting from an elevated, wide, separated state. And my target is usually right in the middle. Boom. I don't get greedy. And let me explain to you why. Why will I look to play this to the middle? Because of this. All the way back down happens once out of 10 times. 
75% of the way back down will happen two out of 10. But something interesting happens at 50. You go to six out of 10. Whoa. And if I cut this by into a third, so let's say this is 33% instead of 50%. Guess what? Nine out of every 10 times. So where do I want to live my life in this zone? I go for the third to 50, the third to 50, the third to 50, the third to 50. I should say it a hundred times. The third to 50, the third to 50. I live my life where things happen way more often than not. The novice lives his life here. He wants the jackpot. He wants the glaring slam. He wants to turn the game into a, a casino because his one time out of every 10, he feels like a freaking hero. He feels like, like a super, he feels like a superhero. While he's waiting for his one time out of every time, I'm a third to 50, a third to 50, a third to 50, a third to 50, a third to 50. I'm thirding to 50 him to death. I'm outpacing his money by a factor of 10. Do you understand this? People ask me all the time, Oliver, why do you take your profit so early? Now you know, because the early is what happens nine times out of every 10. <laughs> I love you guys. You guys are amazing. All right. So now we know the states and what bars to look for from those states. But so what do you do in the middle of these states? You play the color game. Green takes out red, boom, but near the 20. You see? Green takes out red again, boom, but near the 20. Green takes out red again, boom, but near the 20. Green takes out red again, boom, but near the 20. Play the color game until you get the exhale. <sighs> and once you get the exhale, you start rubbing your hands together. All right. That's how you get ready. You got to rub your hands together. You hear that? Go ahead. Rub your hands together. Do it now. Do it now. Yeah. That's the that's the money rub. Rub those hands together when you get the exhale and just sit back and wait for a red elephant bar. Boom. Play that sucker to the downside or topping tail bar. Boom. Play that to the downside. And you might not be right the first time. That's okay. But you will eventually be right. Trust me, you're in the exhale. You might get stopped out once or twice, maybe, every now and then. You might take the short, boom, stop, and it blips back up a little bit. Okay, all right, no, 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 no big deal. That's going to happen sometimes. That's why you have a stop. But trust me, the numbers play out. Eventually, you're going to get it. And that win is going to wipe out every single little loss you had. You understand? As long as you're playing the proper states in your stock, what state is your stock in? Is it narrow state? Is that 20 and 200 close? Is it a narrow state? Let's go. Is it? It has it left the narrow state, but it's in the process of moving along. Play the color game. Green above red. Boom. Green above red. Boom. Green above red. Boom. But near the 20. When you get to that exhale state, now we think the other way. Repeat, 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 because that's all markets do is repeat that cycle over and over again. This is the money cycle. This is what makes us money. 
The fact that the market has this cycle is what makes us money. Boom! Narrow state with these bars mean up. Narrow state with these bars. Wide state with these bars means down. Now, you're not going to find this stuff in a book. Unless it's my book, but I haven't even put it in my books, really. You're not going to find this level of detail, this nuance level. You know why? Because most people who write books don't trade. Guys, let me just tell you this. I am not giving you third-party information. I'm not regurgitating stuff I've learned from a course. I'm giving you 33 years of playing this game virtually every single day of my life. This is coming from me. This is coming from my experience, what I've learned the hard way. It is not just me. I took 14 different courses from 14 different people and pulled out something from each one of the courses, put it together into a nice little package, put a bow on it and put a price on it. Now I'm selling it to you. That's 99.9% .9 of this industry. That's not what you're getting here. You're getting 33 years thrown in your face into kata. This is not coming from anyone else. This comes from my discoveries, my experience, my trading every single day. It's pure, pure experience in your face. All right. Now, let's go to some real charts, shall we? It's time to start. Let's look at the market right now. Are you can can we do that? Can we look at the market right now? I don't want any old examples. Can I look at the market right now? Just let me know. I can do it. I can do it right now. All right, let me do it right now. Let's pull up the market right now. How do I get this thing up here? Let's see. I will do 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 do. Let's go to yeah, let's do this. All right, now I just want to make sure. Let me, let me, guys, let me pull up the, let me put the screen better. I just took the screen off. That's not you. Don't worry. That's me. Pull it back up just now, right here. The chart nice and visible here. Boom! Guys, did you know it's my birthday? <laughs> All right, let's go. Have I considered doing my own AI trading force? I have 12. Um, I have actually 12. I, I used to have 14. I actually uh, ended the life of two, um, not too long ago, actually. But um, I have 12 automated trading systems that trade without any human intervention. I've had these in place since 2007, actually. So I do, I do have that. All right. All right, guys. So you know what I want to do? Uh, let's let's first go to a daily chart. I just want to, I need to show you these cycles here, guys. Um, one stock that was a huge play for me, guys. I'm, on, I'm reluctant to tell you how much I made on this, but I don't know if I should do that. But anyway, I made a lot of money off this. I want to show you what I made a lot of money off of, and you will immediately know how and why I did. All right, let me, let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. Um, let me pull this bad boy up here. <clears throat> Know what we're doing here. What happened? Take a look at this here. Now, take a look at the 20 period moving average. All right. Do you see, during this part of the cycle, how do you want to play? 
How do you want to play? Talk to me. How do you want to play during that part of the cycle? You want to be long and you want to buy in. You want to play the color game, right? Green above red, right? But where? Where do you play that game? Where do you play the green above red game? Close to the 20, right? All right, so find it. Boom. Find it. Find it. Find it. All right? Now, this is not where I made the most money. I'm going to show you where I made the most money. Right here. Boom. I want you, you can't see the 200 because there's not enough data, really. Imagine the 200 is there. Here's the distance between the 200 and the 20. Here's the distance between the stock and the 20. This is freaking ridiculous. Here we go again. Didn't I show you this picture before? Didn't I draw the little man up there? Here's just holding on. Didn't I draw him before? I drew him for you, right? There he is. There he is again. There he is again, that same guy. And he's crying. Look, look at the tears. He's crying, okay? Rodney, you remember that man? Don't you ever in your life ever again think about entering something that is far away from your 20 period moving average. Don't you fall for that trap, far away, collapse, far away, collapse. This guy is here as well, and he's here as well. I don't want you to be that guy. You're this guy, let me show you who you are. You're this guy, you see? You're this guy, you're this guy. This is fine too, not that far away. Now, what are you doing on these moves away? What are you doing on these surges away from your key 20 period moving average? Tell me, what are you doing? You're selling. And if you get too far up there, I need you shorting. That's right. I need you shorting. Now, what do you short? Do you remember? Do you remember the two, the, the bars? Just wait for them. You remember the bars, right? Let's get those bars back up there really fast. Wait a minute. Let me get those bars back up there really fast. Just to remind you, I, I need you remembering this. These are the bars. Get, let me push this over. Shoot, wait a minute. These are the bars. Any one of the four. All right, any one of the four. Now, check this out. Look at the red bar form. Look at the red bar form, right? The red bar form. Check this out. This red bar was moving down. Let me do it with a thicker one. Down. And you're like, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Here's my here's my elephant bar. Here's my elephant bar. I just dive right into that elephant. Boom. Why? Why would I dive into the elephant once I identified it? Because the elephant is occurring from an exhale state. Boom! I don't need to wait. I don't need to guess. I don't need to think. I don't need to hesitate. I don't need to analyze. I don't need to check the news. I don't need to check the earnings. I don't care what's going on. You give me a fat red elephant from a wide extended state, and 100% of the time, I'm putting money into that elephant. If you watch some of my trades, you see me do this virtually every week, sometimes every day when this scenario happens. Oh, there's Oliver again, putting money into a red elephant far away. This is not rocket science, traders. This game is simple. I'm not saying it's easy. Simple is, is not easy. I get it. But it is simple. Guys, look, think about this. Boys and girls. This game, boys and girls, 
red bars and green bars. No other color. Red bars and green bars. Boys and girls. Boys and girls. There's two lines. The 20 pyramid edge and the 200. Boys and girls. There's, there's two states. Boys and girls. Narrow inhale and wide exhale. Boys and girls. Oh, and boys and girls, there's two directions, up and down. There's two bar types, boys and girls, elephants and tails. And boys and girls, there's two freaking results, win and lose. This game is simple. It's a game of twos. Two colors, two bars, two states, two moving averages, two directions, two results. Get these twos correctly. I can help you get these twos correct. Get these twos correct and have at your disposal the right amount of capital. You can change your freaking life. This can stop being the casino. It can stop being something with random results from you. And if you've got the intellect of a 10 or 12 year old, that's all you need. That's all my intellect is. I stopped growing up after 16. I'm still 16. <laughs> I'm 16 today. It's my birthday. <laughs> you don't need a powerful intellect with this. This is why kids trade better than adults because they use their childlike mentality. Like, let me tell you the difference between an adult mentality and a childlike mentality. Oliver, you say when the stock gets far, far away from the 20. But, but, but can you give me a formula? What percentage far away? How do I know what's far away? That's the adult mind. See, you just messed up. Those questions right there. Is there a percentage, Oliver, can you give me? Can you give me a formula? How far is far? There you go, complicating it and muddying the waters again. You know what a 10-year-old that I teach does? Wow, that's far. If I point to this and say, is that far? They say, wow, Oliver, that's far. That's it. They don't say, but how far? What's the formula? Can you give me a number? What, you know, has, has planet Mars and Saturn aligned perfectly yet? And what about this? And what about that? <laughs> That's the adult mind complicating the matters again. Shoot, just freaking look at the chart. That's far. That's far. That's far. Look at all that space. Look at all that space. Look at all that space. That's all you need. Now wait for one of your four freaking bars and dive into the bar. And that's it. As long as it's happening from either a narrow state or a wide state. And again, don't forget. You've got three things here, right? So look, guys, you've got the narrow state, right? That's one. Then you've got the explosion out of the narrow state for a while. That's phase two. You know how to play out of the narrow state. You wait for one of your four bars to kick things off out of the narrow state. Then while you're in the explosion, you play the color game near the 20. Once you go wide, you see, now you wait for one of the opposite, one of your four bars to ignite from the exhale point. Then you play the color game backwards. You see, the color game backwards. It's freaking easy. I mean, not easy. It's simple. I never say it's easy. I never say it's easy. Here's Roku. Come on. Look look at your exhale state here. Look, look, look. It's 10-year-old stuff. Now, do you see from this exhale state, do you see one of your four bars? Victor says, I've had my aha moment. Thank you. Awesome. Do you see one of your four bars? Boom, dive into that bad boy. Stop at the top. And now relax. 
relax. It's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. These are these are charts from today, guys. These are charts from today. Well, this, this is actually not charts from today. This is today, more like, but you get the point. Um, NVIDIA. Well, I like NVIDIA. I've had NVIDIA since $9.50. Now, guys, look. Here's narrow. Here's NVIDIA narrow, right? Here's NVIDIA coming out of the narrow. Just play the color game. Play the color game. Green above red. Green above red. Green above red. Don't think this is a break. Remember, the 20 is a zone. All right? Just green above red. Green above red. Green above red. Green above red. Play that green. Play that color game. Play that. Look at look at red here. See the red? Green above red. Boom. Play that color game. Play that red. See that red bar near the 20? Boom. You know where to get in. Play the color game, green above red. Take profits away. Take some profits away. Get back in near. Take some profits away. Get back in near. Do you understand this part of the game, the color game? Near, Get in near the 20. Get out away from the 20. Repeat, get in near the 20. Get out away from the 20. When you start to separate, now you got to start being careful. Uh-oh. Uh oh, look, this is awesome. Green above red right there. You're near the 20. Yes, green above red. Please do it. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Now look. Uh oh, this is Friday. Guess what Oliver's going to be looking for Monday <laughs> on NVIDIA. Can you guess? Duh. And if you watch this along with me, if it drops, you're going to smile to yourself knowing. You're going to whisper to yourself, I bet you Oliver's making a fortune. <laughs> <Woo! laughs> love it all right now guys there's a difference between the grind and the acceleration away all right i'm going to do this again there's a difference between the grind along the angle of the 20 this can go on forever but the explosion of way is usually what puts the top in. Remember the little guy I drew. Don't forget. He's always on the explosion away. The grind can go on. Like Apple is like grinding, right? That's different. There's when we, you know, so. When you have the grind, that's different. You're still in the color game. It's when you get the explosion away, you understand, that it's now time to think over. Do you understand this? You understand what I'm saying? The difference between the grind and the explosion away. All right. By the way, guys, I own Apple from a split adjusted price of $2.65. Yeah, baby. NVIDIA from $9.50. Crazy. This is crazy. All right. Let's take a look at, uh, oh, I know what we should take a look at. I know what you want me to take a look at. Everybody wants me to look at Tesla. All right, let's take a look at Tesla. I know. I know you do. Now, all I'm going to do, I'm not even going to say anything. I'm just going to draw, okay? (laughs) 
<laughs> There's that crying man again. Guys, look at look at how ridiculous this is. Look at the stop, the top. Look at the 20. That's like, guys, it's like 500 points away. It's crazy. Look at the 200. And this is where you want to buy. Do you know how many people bought here? Now, that's crazy. What is your gain? Look at the narrow state. Wide state. Now, what is this part of the game? You tell me. What's that part of the game? That's awesome, Jim. Your wife shorted that? Awesome. You play the color game. There you go. Guys, I'm almost, almost embarrassed to say there isn't much more. Like, yeah, there's some refinements and whatever. There's some, I need to teach you some additional tactics, whatever. But for the most part, I'm talking about the foundation of proper market play is here, what I'm giving you now. If you get the foundation right, building on top of that foundation becomes a rather simple thing. But most people don't have the right foundation. They're building on top of a faulty foundation. What you want to do is you want to eliminate your need to have to discover anything. I discovered it for you. I went through hardships for you. I lost hundreds and hundreds of thousands. Of, I lost over $700,000 before I turned profitable. $700,000. And guess what? The money wasn't mine. I had to pay it back. Before I turned a profit, before I became good. I went through all of that. So you don't have to go through that. Let me give you my whole experience. Let me give you 33 years so you don't have to discover anything. You don't have to find out if it works. You just have to bring passion, discipline enough to do what I teach you to do. That's the key. Can you do what you know you should do? Most people don't even know what to do. They're not talking about those. But after I show you what to do, do you have the discipline to do it? You got to ask yourself that. You understand? Because after that, there's no excuses. All right. Let's take a look at one more on these longer term charts. Then we're going to go to Amazon here. Boom. Uh-oh. So here's your relative narrow state here. We're pretty elevated here. Pretty elevated there. The only thing missing here, guys, is the long color game phase is not there, which means this could be higher because what really makes that wide separated state very toppy is the length of the color game phase. Do you, does that make sense? The longer the color game phase occurred before the wide state, the harder that thing is going to fall. You understand? Does that make sense? So this is kind of missing the longer color game state, which means that it could, it could drop, but it also could go higher. You just have to try it and give it a shot. But at least now, you have the general idea of how to play the cycle, how to play the game. That's like 80% of the game, knowing what I'm teaching you today. 
because you will eliminate being on the wrong side the vast majority of the time. Because that's the number one contributor to losses. You're on the wrong side. Like if a trader is losing 86% of the time, doesn't that mean their whole belief system is wrong? Which means that every time they think they should buy, they should actually sell. And every time they think they should sell, they should actually buy. Then it would be 86%, 87% correct. So there, it's not that they have a few things wrong. They have everything wrong. You can't be wrong 80 plus percent of the time and have anything right. Everything is wrong. Everything they think is reversed. Everything they believe is upside down. And you'd be surprised, guys. Look, I have over 9,000 students. I'm telling, and I've been training more, I've trained more traders in this industry than everyone else combined. I train more institutional traders than any person in this industry. And I've been doing it for over 25 years. Now, out of this 25 years, I am telling you, I've learned in the most intricate ways, all the way, all the faults, all the mistakes, everything that stands in the way of a trader being profitable. I've got those things on lock. Now, here's the only thing. No one can do it for you. I can give you all of my tools. I can give you my whole toolbox. So if I use the carpenter analogy, I'm a, I'm a master carpenter. And you watch me on a daily basis most of the time except Wednesday, <laughs> but you watch me on a daily basis, take these tools, my tools and my carpentry box and build beautiful things. Now I give you my whole toolbox. You have every single tool. You have the toolbox, you got the tool belt, but that doesn't make you the carpenter quite yet. So what you have to do is you have to now become proficient with those tools. So the work is on you after you get the tools. Do you know how many people come to me, buy into my programs, and they think they have bought instantaneous success? Are you stupid? Like, what? where on planet Earth does that exist? Wait a minute. I want to play like Michael Jordan. Let me just buy his book. And now I'm Michael Jordan? No. You've got to work on yourself. The tools are important. Most people don't even have the tools. Most people don't even have the knowledge. Most people don't have the foundation in place like I'm giving you here today. Most people don't have that. But even if you have the tools, there's still work to be done on you so that you can make those tools produce beautiful things. And that's what a lot of people miss. This doesn't come automatically. This doesn't come right away either, which is another reason why I say, why use your own money? I, mean, I don't understand that. You see, guys, look, look, I didn't come. I started in the professional world in 1986. I never knew what it was to trade my own capital. I didn't think that anybody did that. I mean, I know investors, that's a different thing. I'm talking about traders. Like, in my world, no one uses their own money. That's considered dumb. Like, why would I want to limit what I can make from my own money when I can gain access to money that's bigger than mine and make more? Like, why do I want to limit myself? Why do I want to limit my gains? That's like a real estate person saying, I don't need the banks. I just buy everything cash. That's not smart. Take, take, the, take money from the bank and 10% of the money, buy this house, another 10% buy that house, and buy 10 houses. Why buy one house with the whole money? Like, this game is not supposed to be played with your own capital. In fact, it's statistically proven that you do better when it's not your money. You're stupid with your own money. You're at least more stupid with your own money. But if you trade my money, you won't want to disappoint me. When you trade my money, you're just a little bit more careful. You're a little bit more disciplined. You're a little bit more responsible. You're a little bit more exacting. 
This is one of the secrets on Wall Street. Not even billionaires with their own hedge funds use their own capital. They have other billionaires put money in. <laughs> no one uses their own capital. And especially in the beginning, because in the beginning, you're going to lose. You have to. Guys, look, here's a, th here's a theory. Look, in order for a dancer to leap, he must first squat, then leap. Right? In order for a tree to grow, first you put the seed down into the ground, and then the freaking tree grows. Right? In order to shoot a pistol, I'm gonna draw a pistol here. Can do this? Ah, yeah. Boom! I did that pretty good. In order to shoot a pistol, you pull the trigger back to propel the bullet forward. In order to shoot a bow and arrow, you pull the bow and arrow back first, and then the bow and arrow shoots forward. In order to jump over a puddle of water, you step back first to gain momentum forward. This is freaking life. In order to become good at something, you must first suck at it. It's just the way life is. In order for a baby to learn how to walk, you must fall a thousand plus times first. You all, the failure part is in the beginning. The falling part is in the beginning. The pullback part is in the beginning. The down in the ground part is in the beginning. The darkness part is in the beginning. It's just the way it is. And so especially in the beginning, you should not be using your own capital because you're going to go through the pullback. It's just the way it is. I sucked for six years, five and a half years. Five and a half years, over $700,000 in red. I'm going to kill myself. And that is not joking. All right, guys, so look, I want to take us to the five-minute. Let's go to the five-minute chart. So we were looking at long-term, but I just wanted to show you the bigger cycles. Now let's go to the smaller cycles. This is where you can make your living every day, right here. Make it every day. Make it every hour. Forget every day. Every hour you should be able to find money with exactly what I taught you. Look at Amazon. This is the last few, this is the last period of yes, yesterday. Look at the narrow state. Look at your elephant bar. Boom, dive into that baby. Stop, now go. Now play the color game. Play the color game, guys. God, you know what? Here's, uh-oh, here's red take out green. Boom! Play the freaking color game. You know how to do it. Wide. Oh, wide. Look at the look at wide. Out. Doesn't this? I can pull up any chart, guys. Any chart in the world. Right now, you should be able to tell me our oh, narrow state, wide state, color game state. Here's my entry, here's my entry, here's my exit. You should be able to do this on anything. Someone's saying right in the chat room now, I'll have to pull up MU. Let's pull up MU, pull up freaking anything. Pull up freaking anything. All right. Boom. Elephant bar from a wide state. Color game, color game, color game, color game, wide state, out. It's the same thing over and over again, guys, over and over again. And then dance here. What the heck is this here? Oh, I like to look at the, you know what, let's, let's take a look at Nike. This is,
Guys, look at this. Look, 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 just look at it. Look at it. Narrow state, wide state, wide state. Narrow state again, color game state. It's not rocket science. I'd say it over and over and over again. It's not rocket science. And you can see, look at Walt Disney. <laughs> it's, it's, it's silly. It's like it's silly, actually. Look, now remember from a, from a narrow state, remember, you can explode upward or downward. You can't know. All you got to do is wait. Now, now come from way out here, guys. Remember, you come from way out here. Listen to the sound. Shh. Boom! Shoot that missile from way outside. Don't come from here like a boom. 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 Out of the boom. 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 No, come from way out here. Shh. Boom! Hit that red elephant bar up as hard as you can. Now play the color game. Play the color game. Play the color game. Remember, your 20 is a zone. Don't think these little things are breaks. Now, guys, each bar is five minutes. This is short-term trading. Louis says, God bless you to share this message. I appreciate that. I appreciate that you appreciate it. Thank you. It's not rocket science, guys. It's not rocket science. Trust me. Let's take a look at Facebook. Oh, 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 oh. Here we go. Nar narrow state. Uh-oh, narrow state on the five-minute chart. Uh-oh. Away, take some profits. Color game state. 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 Color. I'm showing you charts from yesterday and the day before. I'm not going back in the past and rows. I'm not, I'm not cherry picking examples. I'll bring up any freaking chart. You know why? Because the market can't do anything. Thing else. It's stuck on rails because human beings are the same. They're greedy in the wrong places and they're scared in the wrong places to create this cycle. And it will never change ever, not in my lifetime, not in yours either. It's not going to change. You know, it's not going to change. Let's take a look at Twitter. It's crazy, right? Twitter. Look at I'm trying to keep these things here. I love these. Look look at you look at you coming from the wide state. You're narrowing out. You're narrowing out here. You see it? You can tell you were from a wide state here. Oh. Coming back to your narrow state. Here you've gone wide again. You got to be careful. You got the money, the money making state here for a while. You got to be careful now. All right. You get it. It's the same thing over and over again. Square is another stock I trade quite a bit. I mean, um, my traders trade quite a bit, I should say. Look, there you go. It's just, it's the same over again. Wide state. You got to be careful up here on the buy side now. It's not the time to be doing it, doing the, the, the buy entries. When you come back to this narrowed out state, it doesn't have to be touching, just narrower, you know. Now, wait for any one of your four bars, all right, that green, you know, 
away, you're out. You want to make sure you get you're getting out away, guys. You gotta these moves away. You you gotta take advantage of them and kill. Get your take your money. Don't get married. Don't get married to your stock. You know. Awesome, Juan. Awesome. All right. Um, Let's take a look at something real fun here. Let me take a look at Let's take a look at this. Crazy, no? This is cryptocurrency trading. Look at your look at your, look at your narrow state. Look at your look at your money. Look at your color. Look at your color. Color game phase. Your wide state phase. It's crazy. It's the same over and over and over again. I just don't. Here's your narrow state again, right? So now remember, guys. You don't know if you're going to break out of the narrow state up or down, but you don't have to know. Just wait for it to happen and look at the bar. Boom, elephant. You got to give that a shot right there. You know, let's open this bad boy up. You know, you're getting one of your four bars. Right there, color game. There's another one. There's another one of those bars, fat red bar eliminating green, not too far from the 20. And this is just yesterday. There's money every single hour of the day for you. Guys, when I got good with this, I woke up every morning feeling like they opened the markets just for me, that this is my world. They open it for me. And you know what? After I got good, I vowed to myself that I would never, ever make another deposit into the market that I would only withdraw. And the, now, the market world is divided into two large groups, those who put money in, and those who just pull money out of the market. They never put money in, maybe initially the first time, but you shouldn't even do that. Let me put the money in for you. You work on withdrawing. Withdraw. Withdraw, withdraw. Let me deposit for you. You'll be better with my deposit than your deposit. Trust me, this is proven. And then work on withdrawing and work on never again ever making a deposit. Because as you get better, I will give you more money. So that your, your being better makes you more money. And we will split the gains. But I promise you this. I promise you this. That you will never risk a single penny of your family's money. If you lose my money, I am going to kill you. Do you understand? No, I'm teasing. I'm, teasing. No, I'm not going to kill you. <laughs> If you lose my money, then it's my fault. I take the loss. You lose my money, it means that I didn't do my job properly enough. I didn't teach you well enough. I take the loss. You will never, 
risk single penny of your family's money and you will never ever in my program have to put a penny a, a penny of your money into anything you will never have to make a deposit never have to put a single dime into an account never So a lot of people ask, Oliver, why do you do this? Why do you teach and why do you give your capital to traders? What, what, why do you do this? At times, I don't understand the, why. I don't understand why it's not clear. So let me explain, just, be, if, just in case that's not clear, why I do this. When I'm playing a freaking elephant bar in Microsoft, what about the elephant bar in Twitter that's happening now? What about the tail bar in Facebook? But I'm not there. But I want to be there. I want it all. I guess I'm greedy like that. While I'm playing the elephant bar exploding out of a narrow state on Microsoft, I want the topping tail bar from a wide state in Facebook. I want the... I want the igniting bar in, in Starbucks. I want the bar in Twitter. I want the bar in MU. I want the bar in every single thing. I don't want to miss a single one. So what if I take my money, and give a portion to you, and a portion to you, and a portion to you, and I spread you out all over the stocks, Facebook, Microsoft, MU, Twitter, Apple, Baba, Disney, Nike, Starbucks, PayPal. Now, we freaking miss nothing. Do you see the method behind the madness, guys? Does this clarify why I do this? There's power in numbers. We can take over this game with this knowledge and money to play the game like this, we can take it over. That's what I want to do. I want a freaking army of traders that's like one trader, me. It's like one trader in a way. And I want this army spread out over the whole thing. All the key things. I want, every, I want one of my traders always there. Because it's impossible for me alone to just be there. And I'm willing to bet on you. I'm willing to lose my money on you up to $50,000. So I will, if you're not part of my program, I will start you off with $50,000. That's start off. Now, that's not a lot of money, but it's a great start. Then I will move you to 100000 Then I will move you to 250000 Then I will move you to a half a million dollars. And then on and on and on. As you hit certain goals, and this is not a program with an expiration date, it's for life. Now, I got to do this. I know, but for those of you who are already my traders, you guys know all of this already. I know. You guys know all of this already. But what I've got to do. Is for the people who are not part of our family yet. I've got to explain this. All right. Here, in my program, here are your goals. You got to first achieve a $3,000 gain to graduate. Once you graduate, everything is live and real. You got to achieve a $3,000 or better gain again. All right? That's how you got to do this. These are your goals. 3,000. All right? With the 50,000. And then you pass to the next level. Now you've got 100,000. Now your goal is 6,000. Then you pass to the next level. Now you got a quarter of a million dollars. Now your goal is 10,000. And you pass to the next level. Now there are many more levels. I just... Don't want to bore you. I'll just show you the first four levels. Right? 
And in this program, you get 40% of all the kings. And the very best part, <laughs> Woo! I get the 60%. You see? You see how that works? <laughs> I love it. But you have no downside. You take no losses. You understand? Like if you lose and then you say, Oliver, I realize this is not for me. And let's say you're down 10,000, 12,000, 20,000 or whatever. It's my loss. I take the loss. We shake hands. We go our separate ways. Fine. But as long as you want to stay, you stay for life. I will work with you every single day. I will train you every single day of your life. As long as you have my capital in your hands, I'm going to make sure that you are the best that you possibly can be. I'm going to make sure that I give you everything I know, everything I have, because if I don't do that, I lose, not you. If I fail to get you there, I lose, not you. You might lose time, but I lose time and money. So this arrangement keeps both of us honest. It keeps me waking up every single morning, thinking of ways, new ways to make you better, make you better every day. And it's for life. So there's training from me and my traders every single day of your life, forever. Breakout sessions, classes, study sessions, live trading in your face every day. You see traders doing it live in your face every day. You're following them. You're watching them. You're following me. You're watching me. There's something that comes through by osmosis when you're, when you're literally virtually side by side with a trader who's doing it right now and says, listen, follow me. Do it. Do it right now. Do it with me. That's part of our training. You're trading side by side by, with master traders, including myself. And there's nothing that can replace that form of trading. Like there's, you know, the manual form of education has a place. The study portion has a place, but the trading portion is the real gem. That's where all the magic really happens. It happens in the trading every day. And especially if you're trading with someone who's better than you are, that rubs off on you. Most traders out there, they're in these stupid groups I mean, filled with nothing but loud losers who pretend to be winning traders. That is, a, that is disastrous. The last thing you want to be around is a bunch of people trying to figure, figure things out. That's going to lead you nowhere. Be careful of groups and stuff like that unless they're one Unless they are, um, like, for instance, if you've got five or six people in a single program like this together and everyone's got the same mindset, that's different. But otherwise, those, those other groups are very destructive. Now, guys, look, there is a cost for this. This is like your business, right? I tell you, treat this like it's your business. I'm just investing in your business. I don't tell you when to trade, where to trade, how often to trade. I have traders that trade one day a week, one hour a day, 30 minutes a day, all day long, every minute of the day. That's your choice. This is your business. That's the way you got to look at it. I'm just investing in your business. That's all it is. And like any other business, it does have a cost. I wish it didn't have a cost, but it does. I'm talking to you through an Omnovia system. This thing costs me thousands and thousands of dollars a, 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 a week to run this thing. It, it, it costs me to pay some of my top traders to be with you every single day and make sure you're okay and make sure you're advancing and stuff like that. This is business. It has a cost. I've got to charge you something. But what I charge you 
so small compared to the value of this lifelong program. And it's a cost that is lower than any cost to get in any business. And it's also something you can lose in one trade. I want you to think about this. So when I show you the cost, I want you to think about how quickly it is to lose this in one or two trades. Now, we've got several costs here. All right. The self-start program that comes with the $50,000 $50, account and lifelong training and education and sessions with me forever and the 40% payout on your gains, that cost is $1,700. $1,700 for life with me. $1,700 forever with me. You can't get a college degree for that. You can't buy a car for that. You can't even buy a freaking class for a single semester in, 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 a, in a community college for that. You can't get us. You can't you can't enhance your boobs for that, ladies. This is small in the grand scheme of things. You can lose seventeen hundred dollars in a single trade, certainly in a single week, certainly in a single month. But for a lifetime with me. With my team forever. My mother used to teach me, Oliver, never look at a cost just as a cost. Look at the cost in relationship to the value spread out over time. My mother taught me to do this. So she would say, Oliver, let's say the thing that you're buying is going to last you five years. And now you take that cost and you break it down into a daily cost over five years. So there's 365 days in a year times five, right? Take that number, divide it into this number, 1,700, and it's not even a cup of coffee a day. You got to think, is your trading future worth something less than a cup of coffee? Is Oliver worth this? What you have learned in the last two and a half, three hours is more than what most courses charge you five and ten thousand dollars for in this industry has more value this is for life now if you want the self-start and the live trading camp because this is the ultimate combination every trader i encourage get the self-start and and do the live trading camp if you can't do the live trading camp now you do it sometime in the future but get that live trading camp in if you can do it together it's a more advantageous price, right? This is the best way. But if you can't do it together, then get in the self-start. Let's get this done now. Get the self-start. Start. This sets your career. This starts your professional trading career now the right way, organized with proper training, proper guidance forever, every day, and most important, the proper amount of capital. There's far too many traders out here sloshing around with two, three thousand dollars, thinking like you can show up to a gunfight with a knife and win. You can't. You can't play this game with a little bit of money. It doesn't work. You're being set up to just make deposits. The industry knows that the average small money trader will make seven deposits in their lifetime and leave. They're waiting to just get your I'm waiting for your seven deposits. Others are waiting for your seven deposits. And they're just constantly attracting new small depositors to the game because the big depositors don't play it that way. The little ones do. So they eventually get the big deposit, but they get it broken up over seven times. That's the industry average. You will deposit in the market seven times before you disappear because you're broken, because you're disappointed and, and and, and because you weren't successful. And so the industry lives off of people coming in, making seven deposits, leaving. And they're always advertising to bring new people in because there's always people on their seventh deposit. Leave it. You want to stop playing that game. No more deposits. Let me deposit. Let's do this the right way for once. Stop doing it like a novice does it. You'll get there faster if you do the right thing.
So break this cost up over five years. Give yourself five years. More if you can, but at least give yourself five years. Five years is coming anyway, traders. Whether you want it to or not, it's coming. Why not let five years from now, you be able to say, wow, I put five years into this. Look at where I am now. You understand? I wish something like this existed back in the 1980s when I started. Started in 1981. Crazy. My first trade. I wouldn't have lost $700,000 learning this. Crazy. But guys, look, if you're really serious and you're willing, this is my birthday gift. I'm giving this to you for this price, this discounted price. Now there's less of an excuse. $1,500 for self start, guys. $2,000? I just knocked 1000 off the whole thing. $2,000 for life, for everything? There's nothing else beyond this. Nothing. It's not like I'm going to come, now this course number three, and now this course number four. That's that BS that other firms play. I play to make money trading. I've got to support you during your, the life of yourself, of course. So it's a business. I've got to cover some of my costs here. But here's the thing. Your profits, you get 40% of the gains. I get 60%. But check this out. I will give you 100% of the gains up to the cost of your program. So I will not take my profits. I will not take my share until you get this back. Get your money back first. Then we're in business together. You get 40%, I get 60%. You get 100% up to $2,000 if that's what you paid in. You get 100% up to $1,500. Your first $1,500 is yours, all of it, to keep it. After you get your investment back, you have made the program free. Now we share. No one does that. How many people are willing, have so much confidence in their ability to teach you that they're willing to take their family's money and risk it on you after they taught you. You know, most people after they teach you do a Hail Mary and hope you never contact them again. I'm so confident. I say, put your money away, trade mine, risk my money. I'm confident enough. I can, I can turn you into doing this properly. It's one trade, guys, for a lifetime. It's one trade for a lifetime. And let me tell you this. I won't be doing this forever. I won't be doing this forever. All right, so at a certain point, man, I cut this off. I've got my solid team straight. There's no more new entrance I need. And we go from there. So I'm telling you, get in while you can. One more thing, you know the discounted price just for being here. My birthday gift to you. You know that I will give you 100% of your gains up to your, so that you first get your investment back. Your goal should be number one, graduate. Number two, get your money back. Make the program free. Number three, make us a fortune. We've got a long weekend. If you commit before the end of business on Tuesday, Tuesday, guys, yeah, it's Tuesday. Commit before the end of business on Tuesday to any one of these programs, and I will give you the sixty percent of all games earn and I will take the 40%. Now you're the majority partner. You make the most money. If you're serious enough and you commit before the end of Tuesday, this upcoming Tuesday, the market's closed on Monday, remember. You got one business day, Tuesday. You get 60% of all games and I get 40%. So you get the 100% 
tuition reimbursement initially, get your money back, then earn 60% on all trading profits. You can make the program free. If you play the 20 period moving average correctly, if you play the inhale and exhale states correctly, if you play the color game state correctly, if you do these things correctly, you will graduate. You will get your money back. You will make this program free. You will earn that 60%. If you do, if you're disciplined enough to do what I teach you, you will make it. Think about the gains compared, the potential gains compared to this. You can make that in five minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, a day, a week. Think of it over a lifetime, guys. It's nothing. You have no idea how much I love you guys. Woo! My birthday. Guys, I know there's so many things you could be doing on a Saturday afternoon like this. You could be in the, in the mall. You could be walking your dog in the park. You could be playing with your kids. You can be, I don't know, driving in your Ferrari down the street or something like that. I don't know. Hiking. But you're here with me. And it's something I don't take lightly. Thank you so very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience with our technical issues here. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your birthday wishes. I try at every time I give this have an opportunity to speak with you. I try my best to give you something of value, to give you something that potentially can last a lifetime. I hope I've done that here today. I love you more than you know. And I'm looking forward to us working together starting next week if you're not in my family. Let's go.